Yes, here we go then. Second time I went to France. Yes, age 16. Summer of 1975. Um, I went to France in August because I was starting work in September. I got myself a job, um, which was a training electronics engineer. And I was starting on September the 8th. So the begin beginning of August, I buggered off to France again, but this time I did it on my own. And this time, I, because I was on my own, my bravado wasn't quite so high, like you know. So I actually bought a ticket on the tra on the, to get on the, the ferry. So I was legit. <laughs> I was legit. So I jumped the trains down to Folkestone again and, had a, and, and got myself a ticket to get on the ferry. I think I got to Dover actually that time and I had to walk right across Dover. I later on found out that I could do a trip for a fiver. Um, there used to be a way that, uh, which I, I used this many times later on, travelling between um, England and France. This is before um, the e European Union, it's, it's when the common market, so they didn't have the Schengen Treaty and thing, it's before we signed away any of our um, sovereignty to the European Union. And uh, so we still had Citadel England at, at the other end, like you know, but there was a pub in Dover that you could go in where the crews of all the ship used to drink, you know, the, 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 the ferry crews, they'd all gather for a drink before they went on board do a shift and so you go on there like you buy yourself a drink and you'd say to the barman I'd like to do a trip and the barman would say go through to the back there and you go and sit in the back there and some bloke come up to you and say do you want to do a trip and you say yeah I need to do a trip and basically a trip was to get to France you know bypass customs bypass everything like you know and once you get off the other side, you're on your own. Uh, which, but the French customs were so slack, didn't have to worry about it so much. Right, okay, and you could do the same coming back, but it was more difficult because they were French crews, and you had to go on the P and O ferries coming back, like with the French crews. Um, but they were still, and it was still. I think it was. Um, 50 francs coming back and five quid going there like you know so five for each way like you know basically and um you just basically give the guy a fiver and you just walk on you go out the pub walk down to the docks and you go straight through in with a crowd of blokes walk straight on you go take you they take you down to a cabin they say when the boat departs come upstairs and we'll give you a meal because, um, you, you know, uh, so some, it's usually the cooks or something like that you, we were going on with. And you, you, for your fiver, you get a free meal. And you went to the bar, and they didn't charge you for a drink. Yeah, and they wink at you, like, and everything. Oh, you know, good, good working class stuff, like, yeah. And you get off at the other side, and you get through the French thing, and you get through the French thing. Yeah, yeah. That was really, really good. I did that a couple of times, actually. A few times, actually. I think about three or four, all said and done. Um, I forget the name of the pub in, in Dover, but that was a genuine, genuine thing that you used to be able to do. Go and get a trip. It was called a trip. Oh, how the world has changed! Yeah, and you could you could get across the you could get across to France really quite easy. But this time, I bought myself a ferry ticket, and I got myself on a ferry on my own, sleeping bag in a backpack thinking I was sort of like the wayfaring stranger type thing like you know I quite liked it actually to be quite honest I, I quite like traveling the idea of traveling and you know just sort of like being rootless not having any roots or anything in a so I just, I just guitar in a bag that I could basically throw some clothes in so I didn't really have a rucksack I had a guitar, a guitar what they call a gig bag nowadays, but it wasn't really a gig bag, it was just a plastic bag. And um, I had a, a sleeping bag rolled up and sheet, a ground sheet, little ground sheet, little ground sheet that you could um, 
something and basically put that down. Either have it over you or under you, depending on what the weather was like. And off I went to France again this time. And uh, I got to France. I, I can remember I bought one of those lighters on the boat. And um, I bought myself, when I was on the boat, I bought myself some French cigarettes, some Disque Bleu, because I was going to France and I was going to be, you know, French. But um, I got there and I, I didn't go, I didn't get on a train. I didn't get anywhere. Like, yeah, I was actually just kicked out in, and I, 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 I hitched into Calais. And the weather was beautiful. It was lovely. And I hitched down to a place called Le Touquet and Berck. Uh, I think I got to Le Touquet first of all. And Paris Plage, I remember it. Paris by the sea. I think Le Touquet was sort of like the, the French equivalent of Brighton, really. Yeah, and there was lots of people holiday making and things. And it was 75, summer of 75. Lovely, lovely, lovely weather, absolutely gorgeous weather. And I just sort of went to the seafront with a guitar, young kid thing, guitar. And next thing I know, I'm chatting with some young French people like who basically are doing the same as me. They're probably about 17, 18, like, you know, but they're hippies and they're just bumming around and uh, just hanging out. Like, yeah, I didn't have that much money. And uh, I slept on the beach and th basically these, old, these slightly French older kids um, took me under their wing. We, we just basically drank and smoked and hung out. But um, one of the things they, they did, they, they, did they, think they were absolutely demon shoplifters this lot. They had no money, they didn't have any money between them. They were begging all day long to get a few francs together. And I don't know what they wanted it for. I think they needed to get, but they, they, they took me into the shops and they stole whiskey, they stole bread, they stole everything like you. Know, and we'd go and have a picnic on the beach <laughs> with everything that they stole. Now I wasn't, I wasn't, I mean, to be quite honest, I wasn't good at shoplifting. I wasn't that that you know, it, not the sort of thing that I ever ever thought about really. Shoplifting, I didn't. You know, it's not the sort of thing that. I mean, we did do a bit of shoplifting, but it, I think my memory is. Anyway, these guys were demon shoplifters. Where that, I think that's where I was. I do apologise, but my, I think I filled my SD card up, so I've um, had to move over. So. Anyway, so we, we still, I mean, the, the food we still would be um, absolutely, they, they, they were connoisseurs, French connoisseurs, like they'd still, you know, camembert, you know, bread, and, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how they did it all, but I mean, and then we'd go down onto the beach, and, and in the evening, because you wouldn't eat all bloody day, you'd, you'd, you'd wait till the evening, and you'd have ham, jambon, fromage, you know, legume, you know, salade, du vin, du whisky, du beer. You know, didn't nick beer that much beer. Or oh, gelon was the beer that they nicked actually, which was uh, a brown beer in a sort of like a champagne bottle thing. <laughs> that was really nice actually. And you'd sit there and you'd eat like kings at this banquet. And, you, and we were there, and we'd be almost like something out of a French Renaissance, or not Renaissance, a French um, Impressionist painting. We'd be sitting on the beach and drinking and oh, la, 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 and all like this. But, as with everything, like, you know, the, the youths and things like that, the, uh, the local town shopkeepers soon talked amongst each other and said, like, you know, this bunch of bloody herberts are nicking everything like you know so we suddenly couldn't get into any shops so uh next town so we hitched down the coast to the next town or well, you know all get down say oh well, i'll see you in um we'll go to berk with lutuke berk 
and we went to, down to Burke, and um, it's always made me laugh that name, Burke. <laughs> He's a complete Burke. Anyway, um, um, Burke in French actually means Berk. Um It can also mean vomit, which is a, a town called Vomit, which which was really bad name for this town because it was sweet and pretty little seaside town in the and. The, the way the sun set on that western coast, the beautiful golden sands. Oh, it was lovely. Yeah, and um, so we got down there and we exactly the same there. And uh, same thing, you know, about three, four days in, the shopkeepers get sort of like uh, wet, wise to us. And so we moved down to the next town like here. Uh, and my lovely, I did I, I can't remember, I, I did get a girlfriend, a lovely little girlfriend, very sweet, and um, she was um, uh, Arabic, and uh, she was ever so sweet, I mean I didn't know anything about Muslim or religion, I didn't even know anything about Catholicism then, like, I was brought up sort of, um, we went to church sometimes. I mean, I think my mother sent us to church when we were kids to get us out of the house for on Sunday morning. Uh, you know, so we used to go to Sunday school. I can remember she said to me, did you talk about Jesus? And apparently I said, was that the one playing the piano? So, it sort of went right over my head religion, really. And uh, so, <laughs> I didn't understand that, you know, that um, this religion was very, very strict and everything. And I remember her brother was sort of like, she was worried because her brother was chasing her. She was about 16 and she was doing the same as what I was doing. Just, she buggered off and ran away from home and was just hanging out on the beach. Smoking and drinking and what have you, like, you know, everything that a young Muslim girl shouldn't be doing. And... I, you know, subsequently learned that it was probably a very dangerous thing for her to do. But um, she was very, very sweet. And I treated her with complete and utter respect. Because she was very innocent in a lot of respect. I remember one night we slept away from... We got out of town the second time. Because we went to Burke Plage, which was lovely. We hung around at Burke Plage. And then we had to get out of town because the, the shopkeepers called the police so we went down to the next town and when we got there I noticed uh, there was a fantastic sand dunes and everything like that and me and her got there and um, there were police everywhere and one of and a couple of the guys from our um, group there were about nine or ten of us you know the hippies the, 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 the they were done for vagrants they were arrested for vagrancy so um, you can see where we were going here like so we were vagrants really so um, we hid in the sand dunes, like, and, and I came down from the sand dunes when um, the police had gone, taking everybody with them. And uh, this guy came in with a lorry. Now I've been there for about two weeks now by this time, like, and I, yeah, and he's got a lorry full of melons. Now I'd never seen a melon before in my life. And I said, "What's this?" He said, "Oh, it's fruit. It's melon. Like, no, it's melon." And this guy came down, and he chopped this melon up off this back of this truck. It was a, you know, sort of like a pickup thing, like, the old Citroen pickup thing, like the Citroen, forget what you name it, looked like a shed on wheels with a pickup, a load of melons in the back, probably it's a farm truck. And he'd obviously grown them. And he chopped one up and he gave me a slice and, oh, I've never tasted a melon like that since or before or since or uh, any time like that. It was to die for utterly to die for and that was the taste explosion and I bought two melons and I can remember I got a very upset stomach <laughs> within about 15 minutes I don't think it was the melons I think that was in the post anyway like I had to go in um go to a cafe and throw my trousers away and, oh, messy 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 but we went to sleep in a field that night we got because we got out of town because they they were on vigilance looking for these hippies traveling hippies I forget the name of this little town, 
I could look on the map actually and work it out because it's the next one down from there. And it's a tiny little place, beautiful, beautiful. Sand dunes, beach, you know, you know the scene. Love it, love it, love it. And um, we, we went inland just a little bit to this field. There was this field, the grass field. The weather was beautiful. So we laid out my um, thing and laid out my sleeping bag and she had her sleeping bag. We made a double sleeping bag. We, 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 we got into it and we went to sleep, made pillows and we went to sleep. And I can remember waking up in the morning and it must have been about six, seven o'clock, I don't know what time. And I could hear, and we're down in the grass and I could hear footsteps coming towards me. And I'm thinking, oh, Fuck, it's a farmer. <laughs> I don't I've got, to, I've got to deal with the farmer. And I thought, perhaps they haven't seen us, because the grass was very long. Perhaps they haven't seen us. I'll, um, I'm going to just lie here. And she was fast asleep here, next to me. Lovely little thing, only about five foot tall, tiny little thing, lovely little girl. And, um, and she was as pure when I left her as when I found her. I, honestly, I, 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 I had to, only thing I had for her was respect. And um, I wasn't like that with other women actually, to be quite honest. But I did really respect this young lady. Anyway, um, I, this noise, these footsteps got closer and closer, and I'm thinking, oh Christ, they're coming! It's it's coming over, coming. And, and, and she woke up. And she said to me, you know, like, uh, we had broken French, franglais, sort of like, you know, kiss, 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 I could work out, in a couple of weeks I worked out what she I said, it's footsteps, it's footsteps, I hear. And then, this dark shape came over us, like, and I, like, I looked up, and there was this big horse's head coming straight down, and, and his tongue comes out and licks me on the face, like, uh, it was a beautiful dapple grey horse. Somebody had obviously released into the field, and uh, that morning, like you know, and um, oh, that was so sweet! What a lovely horse! And we, and we, um, oh, it was a beautiful morning, but from the fear, and, and we were laughing our socks, and we were laughing. But I had to say goodbye because basically, um, if we went into town, the police were going to arrest, they arrested everybody virtually and because we'd gone out of town and gone and slept in the in the field we got away from it and her brother had been looking for her and he basically poor bugger had got arrested as for vagrancy <laughs> when he was looking for his sister and so basically we took her and I took her to a phone booth and she phoned home and told her everything, everything was all right. And that she was completely safe and where she could meet her brother and her brother was seen. I made sure I stayed with her till her brother came along and he was quite surly with me. I can remember, but I, I assured him that she was completely safe and she was completely looked after and she was completely lovely like, yeah. and he ended up cuddling me which was really nice and thanking me and crying I mean they must have been worried sick about her but I mean I only met her and I didn't know the situation yeah. Yeah. at least they had somebody to worry you know <laughs> once again I got back to England Oh, getting back to, um, oh, terrible times, terrible times. I got, a, I got a lift, I tried to hitch a lift from Dover to, um, South London. Oh, not good. End of my holiday. End of my holiday, yes. Get a lift from this guy in this Mercedes sports car. You know what's coming. And we're going along, going up there like, and he's got this, he's got this sort of like, it's a sports car, two-seated with a hard top, like, you know, like, but nice plush car, and I'm sitting there, and my big sit, and he says, oh, you're a musician, you play guitar, and I said, yeah, 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 
And I said, what have you been doing? I have been hitching in France, but I'm asking questions, everything like that, like, yeah. And uh, he's going, on, we're going along. And next he says, do you like girls? And I said, yeah, who, who doesn't like, you know? And then I looked down, he's got a fucking his cock out, fucking fully erect, and he says, go, go on, like that, and he's, he's trying to get me to fucking suck his cock. Fucking hell. Now, I wasn't about to sort of, like, go down on anybody. Jesus. Oh! And we had a fucking fight. I mean... I managed to scratch his face really, 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 really quite badly. I, I, I mean, if he, I think he was married. I think I don't know what, how he, he had to explain. I, I left him marked. I was marked and battered and bruised. And the car sort of like, I mean, he did this as the car was going along. And of course, he's trying to stop the car because I'm going for him like there's no tomorrow. And. Uh, he stops the car and I get the car out and I, I, and I get out the car and I get my guitar and my sleeping bag. I, I, I don't know if I got my sleeping bag or anything like that. I, think, I know I got the guitar bag and I got out and it was four o'clock in the fucking morning and I'm somewhere halfway through fucking Kent by the side of the road on the A2, battered and bruised. And this cunt, this cunt that tried to get me to suck his fucking cock. What a fucking cunt. Excuse my language, but what a fucking cunt. Oh. Anyway, I'd love to see what he had explained all those marks on. I got him right there. Down his face with my claws. And my hands weren't very clean either. Hopefully it, it, it festered. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, there are some nasty... Oh, what? I mean... Anyway, that was the second time I've been, I had something like that happen to me. Um, first time I was a lot younger and the guy was a lot bigger. And I was saved by an elderly lady with a broom. No, no, no. That was, that guy fucking went, had me pinned down, fucking knob out and was wanking into my face. Fucking knees on me shoulders. <laughs> Fucking cunt! Eleven-year-old kid go to scouts! <laughs> I got home, I said, Mum, I want a bath, I'm having a bath. She said, Why? I said, I'm having a bath. I don't need a bath, it's not Sunday. I said, I'm having a bath. Oh. Anyway, yeah. So I got back from France. That that the, I got I did get a lift after after that and I said, You're not gonna rape me, are you? to the boat in the car and he said, no, I'm not going to, why would you say that? I said, the last cunt just tried to rape me. He said, get in, you're all right with me, come on. And he did, he took me right the way home. God love him. God love him. Right, he said, I can see you quite shaking up right here. And he went right out of his way and took me home. So you get one fucking arsehole and you get one angel. It's weird. I'll tell you another story about an angel next time. Peace and love, people. Take care.